The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the crowd and with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, and that of the gospel will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? What could one give in exchange for his life? Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this faithless and sinful generation the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. He also said to them, Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God has come in power. This is the good news of our salvation. Jesus in today's gospel is telling a very difficult truth for the crowd and for his disciples. But what is amazing when we study historically the early church is that it was understood by his disciples in the apostolic church. The great apostles that we honor as part of the communion of saints, Peter, Paul, and Stephen, as recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, they died for Jesus. Not only did they take up their cross and dedicate themselves to the great efforts in evangelizing, traveling all over the Mediterranean world like Peter and Paul, or dying preaching the message of Jesus in Jerusalem, like St. Stephen, were giving witness that they had put Jesus first and they put as relative all the other desires and yearnings that we have as human beings living in this world of ours. Jesus comes first and this basically is the message he's giving us in today's reading which he gave in the other Gospels too especially in the Gospel of St. John. If you love me you must love those whom I love in the way I love them without counting the cost. This is really the message of love itself even on the human level. We have been following, I think all of us, this revolution in Egypt for the last two weeks that has finally achieved its goal. Hundreds of thousands of citizens coming out into Tarot Square and demonstrating against what they considered the autocratic the dictatorship of Mubarak. But I was looking at the 
TV and there was an interview of one of the demonstrators and he told the interviewer, the journalist, that they set up barriers between the demonstrators and the tanks that could have destroyed them if the army obeyed Mubarak and did not allow the protesters to stay. They could have come in and caused carnage. So what they did was they took some of the demonstrators, put up barriers, and told the demonstrators to sit in front of the barriers so that the ones in the tanks would have to kill them first to enter into this square where hundreds of thousands were protesting. Those persons, not only in the square, but sitting on those chairs, would understand what Jesus was saying. They were willing to give their lives in order to get freedom for their fellow citizens. This is what Jesus means to take up your cross and follow him. Because basically that was the motive of Jesus. To love to the end without counting the cost. To be faithful to the mission of his father and to his love of not only his disciples whom he knew, but all of us that he loved to the full. And so what he's saying is that as Christians in our belief of Jesus himself, we have to have this intimate relationship. Every good mother and father has that relationship with their children. And good children have that relationship with their parents. An intimate, interpersonal, reciprocal relationship of intimacy. And that is not an authentic relationship unless you can put your life on the line. That you're willing to offer your time, talent, energy, your treasure, your blessings, in order that the other might be saved and you can give yourself in love to them. This is done in one way when we call about white martyrdom. Not that you will be killed or executed, but you give your testimony of life day in and day out, by performing the responsibilities you need to take care of your loved ones. And therefore, Jesus is doing something that is completely human, in the good sense of the term, but also divine, because he will fulfill the mission of his Father to die for us, in order to lead us to eternal life.